Imagine a peaceful Christmas day suddenly turned into a nightmarish scene, a day that Ryan Waller, a young man from Knoxville, Tennessee, would never forget. The joyous celebration of Christmas was unexpectedly shattered when the tranquility of Ryan's home was invaded by unwelcome intruders. Amid the twinkling fairy lights and the soft rustle of wrapping paper, a sinister shadow fell over the Waller household. Ryan, a regular young man, found himself staring down the barrel of a gun, faced with the unimaginable terror of a home invasion. The festive Christmas cheer was replaced by a chilling fear, the warm glow of the fireplace casting long, eerie shadows as the intruders, Richie and Larry Carver, made their menacing presence known. In the ensuing confrontation, gunshots echoed through the house, turning the festive day into a horrifying spectacle of violence. Ryan was shot twice in the head, a brutal act that would change his life forever. But the horror didn't end there. The life of his beloved girlfriend was cruelly snuffed out, her laughter and smiles forever silenced. The peaceful snow outside was a stark contrast to the chaos that had unfolded within. The Christmas tree, once a symbol of joy and togetherness, stood as a silent witness to the unimaginable violence that had just taken place. In the aftermath of the shooting, Ryan, severely wounded, was left to grapple with the harsh reality of his girlfriend's murder. His world, once filled with love and laughter, was now tainted with brutality and loss. As the sirens wailed in the distance, Ryan was left alone, his life hanging in the balance, his heart heavy with unspeakable grief. Days passed before help arrived, and when it did, it was not the relief Ryan had hoped for. The clock had been ticking, the minutes morphing into hours, the hours into days, until finally, the police showed up at the scene. Knoxville, Tennessee, a place where the community fabric is woven tight, was shaken to its core. The tranquility of the neighborhood was pierced by the late arrival of the police, their sirens echoing through the silent streets. They found Ryan, a young man in his prime, shot twice in the head, struggling to hold on to life. But the police, instead of rushing him to the hospital, decided to interrogate him. They questioned him relentlessly for hours on end, oblivious or perhaps indifferent to the urgency of his critical condition. Ryan, already grappling with the physical agony of his wounds, was subjected to this mental torment, his pleas for medical attention falling on deaf ears. There was a palpable tension in the air as the police continued their relentless grilling. Ryan, despite his condition, was made to relive the horrific Christmas Day break-in over and over, each recounting draining him more than the last. It was a tragic irony, the very institution meant to protect and serve, seemingly adding to his suffering. The police, the supposed beacon of justice, were in this case, a source of added distress. Their late arrival had already cost Ryan precious time, and now, their prolonged interrogation was costing him even more. The situation was a glaring example of the systemic shortcomings, a stark reminder that sometimes, those who are meant to help can end up causing harm instead. Every tick of the clock was a grim reminder of the time slipping away, time that Ryan didn't have. The precious seconds that could have been used to save him were instead spent in an interrogation room. His life, once full of promise, was now hanging by a thread, the light at the end of the tunnel growing dimmer with each passing moment. As the clock ticked on, so did Ryan's life, every second bringing him closer to his untimely end. And so, in an atmosphere of urgency and despair, the second chapter of this tragic tale came to a close. As Ryan's life hung in the balance, the wheels of justice began to turn, albeit with questionable motives. In the wake of the Christmas Day tragedy, the investigation commenced. Knoxville's finest were called upon to decipher the puzzle pieces of this shocking crime. However, from the outset the conduct of the police was called into question. At the crime scene, instead of the meticulous care usually associated with such investigations, there were allegations of negligence and recklessness. The house, now a chilling tableau of the tragic event, seemed to have been treated with a casual disregard for preserving vital evidence. As the days passed, the whispers of police misconduct grew louder. Critics pointed to the hours-long interrogation of Ryan, a critically injured man, as a glaring example of their questionable ethics. But it didn't stop there. Reports began to circulate of evidence tampering. The interrogator, a supposedly seasoned professional, was charged with this grave accusation. Instead of being a beacon of truth and justice, they were now under scrutiny for twisting the narrative to fit their own interpretation. The trust between the public and the police force started to erode. 
accusations flew, and the entire investigation seemed to be teetering on the brink of a scandal. Could the very people entrusted with upholding the law have broken it? As the investigation unfolded, it seemed more like a hastily stitched patchwork of conjectures and convenient assumptions rather than a pursuit of the truth. The community watched, aghast as the integrity of the justice system they had believed in was being questioned. Yet, amidst this turmoil, one tragic fact remained. Ryan Waller, the young man caught in the crossfire of a senseless act of violence, was fighting for his life. In the midst of chaos and confusion, Ryan Waller succumbed to his injuries. In the early hours of January 20, 2016, Ryan Waller took his last breath. The young man from Knoxville, Tennessee, who had become a national interest due to a tragic Christmas Day break-in, was no longer among the living. His life was cut short, not by the hands of time, but by the cruel fate that had befallen him. Ryan had been shot twice in the head during the break-in. Despite the urgency of his condition, he was subjected to hours of interrogation by the police, his life hanging by a thread as each moment passed. His body was a battlefield, one where he was the lone soldier fighting against the odds. His injuries were severe, the bullets having inflicted critical damage. His brain, the command center of the body, was under siege from the trauma. Yet, despite the severity of his condition, Ryan held on. He clung to life with a tenacity that was as awe-inspiring as it was heartbreaking. Days turned into weeks. With each passing day, his condition worsened. Medical professionals did everything in their power to save him, but the damage was too extensive. His body, once strong and vibrant, was now a shell of its former self. His life force was fading, slowly but surely. His struggle was a testament to his willpower, his determination to survive. But the human body has its limits. And on that fateful day in January, Ryan's body reached its breaking point. The world lost a soul that day. A soul that had been put through an unimaginable ordeal. A soul that had fought against all odds to survive. But the story of Ryan Waller was about more than just his tragic death. It was a tale of courage, of resilience, of a fight against injustice. Ryan Waller's story, however, was far from over. His death marked the end of his physical existence, but his spirit lived on. His story continued to unfold, igniting a pursuit for justice that would shake the very foundation of the Phoenix Police Department. The courtroom became the stage where justice would be sought for Ryan Waller. Under the weight of a nation's gaze, the trial of Richie and Larry Carver began. The Carvers, brothers from Knoxville, found themselves on the wrong side of the law, facing severe charges for their Christmas Day break-in and the subsequent murder of Ryan Waller's girlfriend, not to mention the shooting of Waller himself. The prosecution presented a compelling case, meticulously piecing together the chilling events of that fateful Christmas Day. The defense in turn tried to sow seeds of doubt, but the evidence was overwhelming. The Carver brothers had left a trail, a damning breadcrumb path of their guilt. Eyewitness testimonies painted a vivid picture of the brothers' cruel, callous disregard for human life. Forensic evidence tied them to the crime scene. The jury, after a deliberation that felt like an eternity, returned with the verdict. Guilty. The word echoed in the courtroom, a grim testament to the justice system's operation. The sentencing was swift and without mercy. Life imprisonment for both Richie and Larry Carver. A fitting punishment for their heinous crimes. A symbolic gesture that society would not stand for such brutality and disregard for life. But as the gavel fell and the Carver brothers were led away, a sense of unease lingered. Questions began to surface about the conduct of the Phoenix Police Department during the initial stages of the investigation. Allegations of evidence tampering, of an interrogation carried out in the face of urgent medical need, cast a shadow over what should have been a clear-cut case of justice served. While justice was served, questions lingered about the conduct of the Phoenix Police Department. In the wake of the trial, Ryan Waller's death sparked a nationwide debate. A young man's life cut short, a girlfriend murdered, the culprits behind bars, yet the sense of justice seemed to be tainted. The case of Ryan Waller was not just a tragic tale of lost lives, it also became a glaring spotlight on the issues within our law enforcement system. The controversy surrounding the case was multi-layered, but it boiled down to one chilling aspect, police misconduct. The Phoenix Police Department, the very institution meant to serve and protect, had seemingly failed Ryan Waller. He was the victim, shot twice in the head, his life hanging by a thread. Yet, instead of immediate medical attention, he was subjected to hours of interrogation. 
It's a chilling scenario that left many questioning the methods and motives of those in uniform. But the outcry didn't stop at public opinion. It found a more personal and poignant voice in Ryan's father. In an act of defiance and demand for justice, he took a stand against the Phoenix Police Department, filing a lawsuit that shook the foundations of the institution. The suit was more than just a legal battle. It was a father's cry for justice for his son, a demand for the accountability of those who had failed him. The lawsuit brought more unsettling details to light. An officer involved in the interrogation was charged with evidence tampering, adding another layer of complexity and controversy to an already tragic case. The charges added fuel to the nationwide debate, raising critical questions about police integrity and the sanctity of our justice system. The case of Ryan Waller became more than just a crime story. It evolved into a symbol of systemic flaws, a testament to the urgent need for reform. It sparked dialogues, debates, and demands for change, echoing far beyond the borders of Knoxville, Tennessee. As the dust settled on the trial, the fallout was far from over. The echoes of this tragic tale continue to resonate, a stark reminder of the imperfections in our justice system. Ryan Waller's story became a symbol of a flawed system. His legacy lives on not just in the hearts of those who loved him, but also in the fight for a more just and accountable law enforcement system. Ryan Waller's story didn't end with his death or with the conviction of his killers. The ripples from this tragic event continued to spread, casting long shadows over those involved and the wider community. The Phoenix Police Department found itself under scrutiny for the way they handled the aftermath of the break-in. Ryan, despite being gravely injured, was subjected to hours of interrogation, with his urgent need for medical attention overlooked. This lapse in judgment, coupled with allegations of evidence tampering, led to a wave of criticism. The department was accused of prioritizing their investigation over the welfare of a seriously wounded victim. In a twist of justice, Ryan's father took the fight to the courts, filing a lawsuit against the Phoenix Police Department, accusing them of negligence and misconduct. The lawsuit was a beacon of hope for those seeking accountability, shining a spotlight on the department's practices. Meanwhile, the interrogator involved was charged with evidence tampering a damning indictment that further tarnished the department's reputation. But the aftermath of Ryan's death extended beyond the courtroom and the police station. It seeped into the heart of Knoxville, Tennessee, where Ryan's family and friends were left grappling with the loss of a young life cut short. His community was rocked, struggling to make sense of the senseless and mourning a future that would never be realized. Ryan's story, though steeped in tragedy, serves as a stark reminder of the potential for systemic failure. His legacy continues to echo throughout his community and beyond, a rallying cry for change and reform. His name is now synonymous with a call for justice, a demand for accountability, and a plea for compassion in the face of tragedy. Ryan Waller's legacy continues to resonate, reminding us of the grave consequences of a broken system. The tale of Ryan Waller, a young man from Knoxville, Tennessee, is a chilling reminder of justice delayed and justice denied. On a day when joy and celebration should have been paramount, Ryan's life was irrevocably marred by a brutal break-in and shooting on Christmas Day. A young life was abruptly disrupted, and a promising future was cut short. The details of the event are as heart-wrenching as they are shocking. Ryan was shot twice in the head during the break-in, a gruesome act of violence that would eventually claim his life. His girlfriend, tragically, did not survive the initial onslaught, a casualty of this senseless and brutal act of violence. In the aftermath of this horrific event, the conduct of the police was far from exemplary. Despite Ryan's urgent need for medical attention, the officers chose to interrogate him for hours on end. The lapse in judgment and humanity was glaring, a stark contrast to the duty of care and protection that law enforcement is bound to uphold. The subsequent investigation into the incident was marred by allegations of police misconduct and evidence tampering. The shocking turn of events led to Ryan's father taking legal action against the Phoenix Police Department. The interrogator was later charged with evidence tampering, adding another layer of complexity to an already convoluted case. The trial that followed brought some semblance of justice for Ryan and his family. Richie and Larry Carver, the individuals responsible for the break-in and subsequent murder, were arrested and sentenced to life in prison. Yet, the memory of Ryan's untimely demise and the circumstances surrounding it continue to cast a long and somber shadow. 
The story of Ryan Waller is a stark reminder that justice, while often delayed, must never be denied.